Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's August 2011. This is the first in my video lecture series on geometric optics and lens design. Today I want to give you an intuitive understanding of how you can control and manipulate light and a basic understanding of what light is. So let's start with rays and waves. Here is a perfect point source, call it a star. It's infinitesimally small and it's going to emit light, light rays or waves here, light waves in, out in spheres. So each sphere here, and here's some arcs, these all represent, say, the peak of the amplitude of the electric field. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But let, let us suppose that we go to the equal peak in the same point on the wavefront. You're going to get these points. If you connect these data points, these points here, you're going to get a light ray. So you can represent a point source as a bunch of rays or as a spherical wavefront. Now the difference between the peak here and then spatially after some time t here, that's called a wavelength. So why are point sources important? Here is an extended source. So this is a piece of paper, a wall, anything. It's going to emit as if it were a bunch of tiny little point sources here. And what I've done is I've put three small point sources, top, bottom, and center. This one in the center is going to emit these golden waves here. This one at the top is going to emit these green waves here, and the bottom, these blue ones likewise. If you go out at some time t and you look at the same spatial point, you know, normal to the surface, you're going to see that it makes a plane wavefront, a flat wavefront here. This was the fact that a, an extended source is made of, of a bunch of tiny point sources. This was pushed by Huygens back in the 1600s. So this is very powerful. We can model optical systems as a conglomeration of a bunch of infinitesimally small point sources. So we're going to talk about a lot about point sources. So what is a light wave? Here is, I'm plotting the electric field as it travels and propagates in, in a, along a distance or versus time. So you've got peaks, you've got valleys, uh, one from one peak to the next peak, that's called the wavelength. Again, from a valley to a valley, that's also the wavelength. Just by way of comparison, visible lights around 500 nanometers or a hundred times, the uh, hundredth the width of a human hair. I showed the electric field in the prior chart. This chart I'm showing in three space. The electric field is here in green and it might be in say the Y plane. Perpendicular to it, you're going to have the magnetic field and it's going to be in say the X plane. The direction of travel of this photon is in the z-plane. Optical engineers like to think of direction of travel in z. That's usually the coordinate system that we use. Let's talk about the different tools we have as an optical engineer to control and manipulate light. And I want to start out with just three right now. First is a mirror, and light's going to come in and bounce off of it. And this is a ray representation. That's called reflection. Also, we have glass and another ray representation. A light may come in and it's going in the glass. It's going to physically bend the direction of the ray. That's called refraction. We also have how light can bend around a corner. Very similarly, like sound waves, you can hear someone from around the corner. Those sound waves, they're traveling around a corner, very similar to light. So let's say we have a, a flat plane here with a hole in it. We've got a plane wave coming in, it's going to hit this hole, and then it's going to produce a bunch of spherical waves. And that's how light is going to bend around a corner. This is called diffraction. Glass is used as a medium for manipulating light. And glass is going to physically slow down the light. So we characterize glass by the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in glass. For a glass, you look out like your window, it's its index is around one and a half. So that means light is going to travel 50% farther in, in, in space than it would in a piece of glass for a set amount of time. 
So glass is a denser medium, and I like to think of it as a photon is going into this medium, and it's a bulk material. It's got to move through and around atoms. This is very similar to riding a bicycle. And I like this analogy because it's going to give you a good intuitive understanding. Let us suppose you're on a bike and you're riding on a freshly paved road. That's very nice and smooth. That's like air. And then you go into deep sand and that's going to slow you down. That's like glass. Deep sand like at a beach. So frequency is the inverse of the time to complete one cycle. So as time gets shorter, the frequency gets higher. For a wave, the, for a photon, the speed is a proportional to the wavelength times the frequency. So in a vacuum, a photon is going to travel at about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. For visible light, then, its frequency is 600 gigahertz. Uh, when light enters glass, the speed is going to slow down. The frequency stays the same, so the wavelength has to shorten. And that's shown here. You have a wave, you know, a, a light beam coming in with a certain wavelength. It's going to hit the glass here, and you can see the wavelength is going to actually get shorter and then continue the same original wavelength when it comes out into air again. So how is light bent? And it's characterized by Snell's law. It's this equation. N sine theta equals N prime sine theta prime. Unprimed is in air, primed is in glass. So the analogy, back to the analogy of riding your bike, you're riding your bike on pavement. Now, and note, if you ride your bike perpendicular to the pavement beach interface, you're not going to change any direction. But if you ride your bike at an angle, your right side of the bike is going to enter first, and it's going to pull the bike to the right. And that's what is happening with a photon. That is why light is slowed down. So that's in a medium. Glass doesn't extend for infinity. You've got windows, or as we like to get fancy, you call them a plain parallel plate like here. You have a ray that comes in. When it leaves this window, it's not going to bend at all. It's going to be displaced because there's bending going on within the glass, and this displacement is proportional to index and thickness. On the other hand, if we put a wedge in the window or a prism, you're going to deviate this beam here. You're going to see it's, it's physically bent. So this apex angle up here, we'll call it A, that's this A right here. The larger this angle, the more the deviation you're going to get. So to first order, you know, small angle approximation where sine theta equals theta, your deviation angle equals your apex angle times the index minus one. There's a more complicated equation that you're going to want to use for uh, thick, thick prisms. So let us suppose we take a bunch of prisms. So on axis, we'll have a plane parallel plate. So light from the distant stars is going to just travel right through undeviated. But then as we leave this, call this our center line. As we go up from the center line, we're going to put prisms with increasing increasingly large apex angles to get increasingly large deviations, such that all these photons come to a single point, we can collect those, and this is how a lens works. And it's very difficult to make a series of prisms and hold them. If you put two spherical surfaces, you get a lens, it does essentially the same thing. And I'm going to give some homework. Don't feel like you have to do this, but it will help. And if you do the homework and you have questions, please post comments on the YouTube channel. The first question is, you know, um, it, it, you could get a little flustered. It's kind of a word problem. Uh, riding your bike on the beach. It's asking you to compute the index of sand versus uh, pavement and uh, how much your, your bike is going to be deviated. Then I want you to calculate the deviation angle of a prism. So that's it. Thank you so much for paying attention. Uh, I'd love comments and feedback. You can follow me on Twitter or you can find us at opticsrealm.com. Thank you so much.